What is up my love bugs? Welcome back to another video. As y'all read in the title, this is about to be all about my MEPS experience and what y'all need to know about it. Alright, so let's start off with what MEPS stands for. It stands for Military Entrance Processing Station. So basically it's where all, anybody who wants to like join the military would, regardless of the brand, that's where they go and they get processed, you know? Um, anywho, um, so I had officially joined the Navy March 23rd of 2018. I know it's 2019 now. I was like, girl, where this video been? You joined a whole year ago. I know. Um, I've been wanting to film this video, but it just never happened. But it's happening now. So, yeah. Um, so I'll start off before the MEPS station itself. So to get into the military, you have to take an exam called the ASVAB. Um, I don't remember what everything stands for. I know, I know the last word B, I think it stands for battery. So yeah, I'll link a little thing down below, like what it actually stands for. Um, but yes, yeah, so you take an exam called the ASVAB. Um, for me, I did a, what did I do? I'm looking down cause I have like notes written down. So like kind of refresh my memory to see I'm hitting all the points. Um, pre what? Oh, okay, so I took the pre-screen ASVAB to see how it'll do, and I actually scored very well, like very, very well. I had taken the ASVAB a couple years before, and I did pretty good too, but like I did exceptionally well on this, and that was like with no studying, basically. So I was surprised, and my recruiter was surprised, so she was like, oh, you did really well. I'm like, really? Thank you. Um, but yeah, so after taking the pre-screen ASVAB, I would go into the map station, um, where I would take the verification test um, and basically when you get there you go through like the little um, what's it called the screener I would say lie detector <laughs> it's not a lie detector the, the screener thing to detect whatever um, you fill out some stuff I think it was like fingerprints I think I did fingerprints then um, and then you would from New York we go downstairs into like this room um, and then you just hop on a computer and you just follow the instructions. And after that was done, I scored it very well. I think I had like a, it's either 79 or 83, which is really, really good. And I was like, okay, V, I see you. Like, okay. All right, so let's fast forward. So I was supposed to originally enlist on March 19th, right? So I went to, I think I had class that day. So after class, I drove to where my recruiting station was to meet, no, did I drive? I did drive. I went to the recruiting station to meet up with my recruiter and we were waiting for this girl who was actually supposed to ship out the same day. Um, and she like took really long. Like, damn, like girl, I'm gonna be late. Like, come on now. And then we eventually didn't even end up going because apparently there was a snowstorm the next day. So they ended up canceling like the whole thing. Like it just messed everything up. So like people that were supposed to ship off that day, they were not shipping off until like a couple days later on that Friday. So I'm like, damn, I was like ready to. I'm like, yes, like it's time. I gotta go. I'm about to go join. Like I'm pumped. Like nah, you, people be asking me like, oh, you scared? I'm like, nah, for what? Like. I'm a G, I I'm a G. <laughs> so anywho, so it got rescheduled for me to enlist on the 23rd. So the 22nd, one of the recruiters came, picked me up from school, um, and took me to where we went first. He took me to the hotel, cause I wasn't listening to the next day. So he took me to the hotel, which was in Staten Island, for us New Yorkers. Um, and I'll insert some clips of the hotel now. So when we got to the hotel, we did a little registration stuff, we went to like this separated ballroom area that was like specifically just for like the military people. 
um, signed some more stuff, and then, you know, they had food there, so I ate some food. There was, like, people from all branches, like, that were, like, trying to enlist from all branches that were there, just waiting, chilling, talking, um, playing games. They had, like, a pool table. They had something else. I don't remember. But it was cool vibes, cool vibes. Um, so, fast forward to my room. Um, you get a roommate, guys. You're not just in a hotel room by yourself. They room you with someone. Um, I was room with this girl from New Jersey. She was like 18 and stuff. She was in the army though. But she was really sweet. She was cool. So at the hotel, we do get a curfew. I think our curfew was like at 10 p.m. So like, you don't gotta be asleep, but you gotta be in your room at 10 p.m. And they would do like checks and stuff like that. Um, and you know, I followed my orders or whatever. I was in my room before 10 or whatever. Um, and then I was like getting ready for the next day. And then I realized yo like where the heck is my license <laughs> and like i knew i brought it because like before i left school that day i'm like okay do i got this yes do i got this my social security card check my i don't know if i had my passport but my passport check like and then when i was double checking in the whole time I'm like whoa whoa where's my license like i know i needed that too I'm like bruh so I'm like going crazy. I'm like, all right, is it in this bag? Is it in this zipper? Is it on the floor? I looked under the bed. I looked behind my pillow. I'm like, yo, I cannot find this. So I'm like texting my recruit. I'm like, um, so I can't find my license. And she's like, oh no. So she was like texting the other recruiter that picked me up to see like, oh, was it in his car? He was like, no. Nah. I'm like, oh my gosh. I ended up like leaving the room and finding like the people that were like in charge of registration. So I'm like, okay, so. Here's what happened. I can't find my license. So, like, they'll help me look around the room where we were beforehand to eat and stuff. And, like, it was, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm just, like, freaking out. I'm just, like, oh, my gosh. Like, Vika, like, what the hell? How you lose your license? <sighs> but, like, they were, like, all right, calm down. We'll tell the hotel people, like, if they find it to leave it at such and such. Leave it with such and such person and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, cool, fine. And you know, the next morning, you know where I found it? I found it in the corner, because I had the bed um, that was in the corner. But I found it, like, in the corner, like, the little space in the corner. I'm like, yo, I looked there so many times. It's like, what the hell? Like, how are you there now? Like, I definitely looked for you there, like, at least five times. But, yeah, it just didn't make sense to me. So, yeah, we had a curfew of 10 p.m., um, and then the next morning we had to get up dumb early. I felt like it was, we had a wake up time at like four. And if you like weren't up, they like, I feel like they went knocking on your doors or something like that. I mean, we were up, me and my roommate, we were up. Um, they give you a call first. They'll call your room first to make sure that you're up. I, I was up before they called. Cause I'm like, nah, like I ain't about to get yelled at because i ain't i ain't up or whatever wake up time was like four you had to be downstairs for breakfast by like 4 30 4 45 breakfast i mean it was i but you can't really eat all the food they have there because at meps you get like blood work and urine and stuff like that and like some foods that you eat it'll like alter with some of the test results so you can't like really eat certain things i'm like damn like what am i gonna eat but, like, they have, like, a lot of stuff. I, the food was, I think it was pretty decent from what I could remember. But, yeah. So, we eat our food. And then we all hop on the bus. And it's probably, like, 5, 5.30-ish. Maybe before then. I think it was, like, 5-ish. Because we had to leave from Staten Island to get to Brooklyn. And I think we had to be at mess by, like, 6.30-ish. Don't quote me, but I think it was, like, 6.30-ish. Um, so we get to MEPS. I feel like it was probably still kind of dark or whatever. They have us all get off the bus. And like I said beforehand, it's like all branches, not just like, oh, just the Navy. Like, no. It was like the Navy, the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, etc. Um, and then they like separate us and then boy, girl. Then we all go in, go through the light. Oh my gosh, the lie detector. The metal detector stuff. We go through the metal detectors. And then whoever has like stuff to lock up, we will lock it up in this room that's like behind like the front desk area. Um, and y'all, you cannot have your phones. 
if you have your phones like you might as well just go home but like you gotta keep your phone locked up so yeah don't get yelled at don't be trying to hide your phone like just just do as you're told all right so after locking our stuff up we are all like lined up in separate lines i think it was by branch i could be wrong don't quote me i really don't remember i just remember we were like separating these like separate lines and stuff like that with our paperwork stuff that needs to be signed social security cards that need to be handed over um if you need to like get your photo taken like you get your photo taken and stuff like that um after that they send you to if you're there for just a specific thing so say you failed some tests at MEPS and you're just there to go get your urine done again then they'll send you like upstairs to go get your urine done if you're if this is your first time and you're like going through the full processing stuff then yeah they'll send you to a whole bunch of different places for me we, I had went to like this paperwork spot first which was on the same floor and then I got sent upstairs to where the medical stuff was the first thing I got done, I think it was like my blood pressure and it was normal. Yeah, I was praying this whole time like everything turned out normal because I don't got time to be coming back. I just wanted to get it over. I was ready. When I said I was ready, I was ready. Okay. Um, but yeah, I got my blood pressure taken and then after that was the hearing test. And y'all, everything is like a hurry up and wait. Like, yo, you got to move quickly, but you're moving quickly so you can wait. Like, every, like, station that you got to, it was like, yo, like, come on, like, with speed. But you're doing it with speed, so you can wait. But you'll hear that a lot. You gotta hurry up to wait. But, yeah. So, after that was the hearing test. And you go inside, like, this little booth. It's not a little. It's kind of long. But it's, like, a booth area. And you have, like, the headphones in. And you just listening for sounds and pressing a button when you hear it on this ear or this ear and whatnot so after the hearing test we go into like this little classroom which is like right next door to the hearing test place and i believe they showed us like a little powerpoint they were talking to us um they has like going through these different paperwork stuff making sure our information was correct i think we were like signing little stuff here and there and then they did like this breathalyzer thing where you blow into something to see like if you got alcohol in your system and then let me see what was after that i think that that's when they did like the ear thing like to make sure you got no earwax y'all before you get there make sure your ears are squeaky clean because if you have earwax you can get disqualified for that like like what like i made sure i was on youtube beforehand watching mad videos on this like y'all ain't this quiet it's quiet yeah like y'all ain't disqualifying me for like the littlest thing like no 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 boo boo mm -mm. like i made sure my ears were clean like you're not about to tell me oh sorry you got too much earwax you go home boo boo like i'll be so tight but they check your ears you good then you move on to the next phase for me the next phase was was vision and yeah i wear glasses i'm not wearing them now but, like, if you wear glasses, you have to bring them with you for the vision test. Because if not, they're like, oh, this girl blind. I'm not, like, really blind. I can see y'all. But, yeah, anyways. Um, if you wear glasses, bring them with you. Um, and then it was, like, a couple different tests within the hearing. The hearing. Within the sight test. Um, you do, like, the regular E thing with the numbers and letters and stuff like that. And cover one eye, cover the other eye. So there's another test for color blindness where they show you this paper that has like these different colors and then there's like a number in the middle like oh what number is this or what letter is this and stuff um what else did they have us do for sight oh there was this thing with like shapes and it was like oh which one's bigger which one's smaller and let me tell y'all a lot of the time it's like what like they looked all the same but like you really just gotta like focus and like all right that one right there is this much this much bigger than that one so i'm gonna go with that one's different than the others but like yeah you just that i just gotta focus because <laughs> it'd be like what they're all the same but next portion we got the gyn portion for us ladies exciting so that's the portion where we're getting checked by doctors and you got to strip down. 
So they have us all go into like this room, take off our clothes, change, and put on like the the paper scrubs. No, not scrubs. You the cover up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I'm mad at myself for not knowing this, cause like, girl, you was a nurse, basically. You you a student nurse. Like you should know what this thing is called. It's not a scrub, but the paper cover up. They had us put on that. Um, and then the wait online again to get checked. I think it was like the first person for like the girls to get checked. Um, there was like two doctors, so there's like a room here and a room here. So I got into this room. Um, the lady was like, I don't know. It was just, it was uncomfortable, but like, what can you do? You just gotta go through it. So I get into the room and she's just asking me like different, you know, no more questions. Won't you last period? Could you be pregnant? Blah 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 blah. blah. No more GYN questions. Um. And then she was just, like, checking my body to see, like, any scars. Like, oh, if, like, you have a scar right here. Like, where was this from? And stuff like that. Like, what happened to here? What happened there? So after checking for scars, she would do, like, a little breast exam. Like, honestly, from the videos I watch and, like, hearing about, like, the GYN test for the females, some people, they had, like, a whole lot worse. I feel like the lady I had, she didn't even really do much. Like, she was, you know, checking and stuff like that but like she didn't really wasn't doing much so i feel like i kind of got lucky because the other doctor i heard she was just going in and I'm like oh thank god i didn't get her but um but yeah so the breast exam and then like she would like check down there to see how were things down there and stuff like that um I'm trying to remember if she had me like spread my cheeks because <laughs> I know the other lady had them like cough and spread the cheeks and stuff like that. I really don't remember this lady having me do this. Like, I don't think she did or if she did it was like a quick thing. Like with the other ones, when they were explaining what the lady was, I'm like, oh damn, like mine didn't do that. But. So after the little GYN test, we go into this other, well, for me, I went to this other room um, and I had like my bra on and panties. And for this portion, it's like the exercise portion and stuff like that, right? For this portion, do not wear a sports bra. You need a regular bra. No, I would say like no padding, just like a regular triangle bra. And girls, do not wear no thongs. Do not wear no cheeksters. Like, you gotta bring out your granny panties, okay? <laughs> like, make sure your booty is fully covered. Like, wear some, like, boy shorts or something like that from Victoria's Secret. I think that's what I did. I had on, like, black boy shorts. Cause, ain't nobody have time. Cause you doing, like, all these, like, flexibility stuff. So, yes. So, with this portion, this is, like, the duck walk portion. So, I might insert a clip of me kind of showing you guys, like, kind of how to do it. Like, what is a duck walk? um somewhere here there i don't know yeah um say so we had they had us do the duck walk they was looking at how we walk in general um go walk forward walk backwards speed walk um i think they had us like doing like these different stretches on the floor to see how we stretch like our flexibility our muscles our movement stuff like that making sure that you know it was normal um, and I think that was like pretty much it for the most part with that. Um, nothing too crazy. Like, make sure you practice your duck walk though. Like, cause they will have you doing it over and over again. I remember there was this, this, I think it was like two girls. Like they just couldn't get in. Like they kept falling and like you got to duck walk forward and then duck walk back. So make sure y'all practice. Um, alrighty. Oh also ladies remember to take off if you have nail polish on take them off your fingers take them off your toes because like they will have you take them off like you don't want to go home for that like i swear to you like they'll send you home over some little little thing like my recruiter made sure to tell me like oh you have nail polish on you better take that off like they don't want that on i'm like oh damn all right thank you for t thank you for telling me um but yeah make sure you take that off um let me see before i move on to the next portion no sports bra no nail polish no makeup like why you wearing makeup you don't need a makeup all right all right so next up is the urine part everyone's favorite part you know so 
so with the urine part we are in a bathroom and there's like maybe two or three stalls and these stalls have no doors so we walk in we pick a stall oh we get a cup that we you know use to pee in right um and for the urine part they was checking for like us females they're checking for pregnancy and like if we did drugs or whatever um but yes we get in and there's a doctor or a lady person just watching us pee if you're lucky they won't stare at you but for me they stared at me i was like um this is really awkward like they're just staring at you just like this you know like um do you have to really stare at me yes yes we do yes it's like all right okay then so i grab my cup you know pull, pull my pants down put my panties down do my little squat and wait and of course of course you know my pee just don't want to come and i needed to pee too that's the worst part i needed to pee but i couldn't because i had this lady just staring at me like staring at me like it was so awkward and like i can't pee they're like try i'm like i'm trying like in my head i'm talking to myself i'm like all right come on girly you know trickle down like i'm thinking about water like shh. it wasn't working I'm like i can't like not even like a little dot like damn they're like, all right, you get one more shot. So, I'm like, damn. Like, and I'm like talking to myself, like, Vico, like, what the heck? Like, you better pee this next time. After that little urine test, like, I think it was time for lunch then. Yes, it was time for lunch. And then we just all went, well, half of us, we went down to the basement area, which is where the cafeteria was. And they had prepared, like, these little baggy lunches for us. It had, like, basically a sandwich, um, a bag of chips, and a it was a sandwich a bag of chips and water or if you didn't get water i think you could get like some type of soda but i think it was water i think i got water and i hate water but i think i got water because it's, it's like yeah no i ain't got no time for you to be saying oh no sorry your blood's wrong there's something wrong with your blood and it's because i had soda so i got my water and my little sandwich um the food was it was decent you know it was eatable it was eatable um so after lunch went back upstairs <sighs> and of course i went back to do the urine test and let me tell y'all i didn't want you know my uterus just did not want to pee you know my bladder was just full of pee and it did not want to pee like i stayed there a whole lot longer than the first time that's for sure because i'm like and this time, I'm, like, really talking to myself. I'm like, all right, yo, Vika, you better pee. Like, you are not about to go home to come back again. Like, no, that's a dub. Like, you better pee. And I'm just like, all right. Like, I'm trying. Like, I'm trying. And miraculously, it's like, ah, as the pee comes flushing out, I'm like, yes. Like, yes, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. They're like, praise Jesus. The pee has come. The pee has come. That sound is so wrong. <laughs> that sound is so wrong. But yes, it was like, oh my God. Like, hallelujah. Like, it was a relief to my bladder. I didn't even fully get all the pee out because it was just like, it was still uncomfortable because it was like another, it was a person watching you. But like, I actually got something. I was like, yes, I don't got to go through this shit again. Like, oh my gosh. Because I've been here, I heard stories about girls that just couldn't pee. Like, they could not do it. And they got sent home. And I'm like, this is not about to be me. Nope. Like, I've been ready since earlier in the week. I'm not about to go home and wait a couple more days to do this again. Nah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But, yes, yeah, so I finally peed. And, of course, I wasn't pregnant. I wasn't doing any drugs and stuff. After urine, I went to go get blood work. Um, and, of course, another long line. Hurry up and wait. Um, but when it got to my turn, so I was sitting in this chair. There was, like, there was like two chairs. And 
you pick whatever arm is best usually my, this arm is usually best for me and you just sit there while they just draw your blood and i felt like i was on that chair forever like forever it felt like a good 20 minutes it probably wasn't that long but it legit felt like i was there for like 20 minutes just sitting there while they were taking my blood because they took mad blood like boku blood so blood work was last for me and then after that it's just you sit and wait and see if you passed everything and they'll call your name and for me it felt like it was taking forever like literally for ever i'm like oh my gosh like what's taking them so long i'm like in my head i'm like oh my gosh i didn't i like what did i feel like what did i do wrong <laughs> like was my eye test bad like did i do get a lot of stuff wrong with hearing or something and then you know like 20 hours later they called my name and they said congratulations you pass and you are moving forward you know to the next round which is basically where you pick your job i was like oh my gosh yay yay <laughs> yeah i was mad hype like yes because not everybody passed like there was this one girl um yeah there was this one girl she came with i think it was like her girlfriend or her wife or something and she passed but like her girlfriend wife like didn't i was like damn because like they had this whole plan like oh they're gonna go go in together and stuff like that i'm like oh damn <sighs> but anywho i passed so i was happy um and then i went downstairs to my branch um and waited again to be called to pick my job all right so now we're on to picking our job so i go into this room with i don't know what his title would be considered this officer with this officer and he has a computer he's like all right let's see what you qualify for and then he sees my score like oh you did really well good job I'm like thank you thank you you know I did my thing anyway um so yeah so he pulls up all the jobs that i qualify for and he's like how would you like to do hm and for those that do not know that is a um hospital corpsman and yeah i was like so conflicted because hospital corpsman was the number one job that i wanted but that was when i was thinking about joining the year prior because at that time i wanted to go active like i was considering going active so i'm like okay like i'm going active so i want a job that i really love like i'm not just gonna settle for a, a job that i don't really like and i'm like active duty with this and doing this all the time like no like i want a job i want gen i would generally be happy with so like hospital corpsman was like the top of my list but at the but you know when i was picking my job this time around i was like damn like y'all got that this time and this is not the job that i want because i was going reserves now because i had gotten into nursing school so it's like okay i want to do the military actually no i'm not even going to explain this to you i'm gonna make a separate video about like why i joined the military and stuff like that um so leave comments down below that y'all want to see it so you know to speed me up with this recording and stuff um but yeah so i was very conflicted because i'm like damn like i really want a hospital corpsman like that's my top job but like at this point in time it's like i don't want that like i wanted like a what was it a yeoman or lg or what was the other one it was y n l g or p p n i feel like i'm saying these abbreviations so wrong i'm sorry i'm sorry someone who's in the military please comment down below what these abbreviations are because i'm forgetting right now but i know it's like y n or logistics or this other thing i'm sorry <laughs> but yeah those three things that's what i really wanted because the um a school for that was short so i'm like oh and of course they didn't have any of that like i feel like they might have had one but it was active duty and i wasn't going active i was going reserves i was like damn like why so at this point in time i'm just like um officer like i would love it but that's not the job that i want right now so 
me and him were just like going back and forth and I ended up like stepping out of the room. And then at this point in time, my recruiter and um, like a whole bunch of other recruiters from like my recruiting office were there and just like crowding around me and like talking to me like, yo, what happened? Like what's wrong? Like, yeah, that's a good job. Like you got a great score, like you qualify for this. I'm like, I know, like, and I was just explaining to them like, this is my dream job, but like at this at this point in time, it's like that's not what I wanted. I wanted LG. I wanted Yeoman and stuff like that. And you know, I felt pressured. Like HM was a job I really wanted, cause it's the medical field, and I love the medical field. So it's like, mm. but yeah, I felt pressured. But I did eventually go back in that room and accept a HM position. Um, he also offered me a HM with a C school to do like dental assistant, but I didn't want to work on teeth. Like I just wanted to be like a regular hospital corpsman. So after that, it was another waiting process before we had sweared in. So prior to getting sweared in, we go into this room um, towards like the front of the MEPS office place. Um, and we're just like watching videos on like sexual harassment, conduct and stuff like that, etc, etc. Um, and they're just like, do you understand? You have to say yes or no, and like, so on and so forth. And then we go into actual swear-in room, because I feel like at the time, there was like another swearing going going on, so we just had to wait, you know? Um, we, for me, my group was like the last of the day. I think it was like at 6 p.m. So, I was there for the entire day, y'all. The entire day. Like, from 6 to 6, it was like a good 12 hours. I was I was tired. But So, after waiting, we go into the swearing room. And I believe it was an army sergeant who was, like, explaining what's going to go on. Um, they were showing us how to do parade rests and how to stand at attention. Um, they were telling us the order in which things was going to go and who's going to be sweared in first. I believe um, the people that were in the National Guard would get sweared in first, I think, because they had, like, two oaths because they were for state and for country as well um so they went first and then i believe it was like the rest of us and we like you know raised our right hand and the whole oath thingy and congratulations and like yay you're official member of the united states military and blah 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 and yeah so yeah that was that um then we went back into the room that we were in the where we were watching the videos on like the conduct and harassment videos and that's where we like signed our stuff you know put our fingerprint to sign stuff a lot a lot of times they have you do fingerprints like it's not just like a regular signature like your fingerprint is your signature a lot of times so it's like you gotta do fingerprint and then you sign but yeah so we went into that room and I'm walking up I'm hype I'm like yes like finally like I was hyped y'all I'm like I'm finally in this like what like this is really happening um so I go up you um the sergeant's like congratulations I'm like thank you it's like here's my little fingerprint let me do my signature and then it was back to um your recruiting branch where everyone's like hype like yeah like here's the new member like yeah um and that's also where we got like our shirt and our backpack. So this is like the shirt I got. I don't know if it changed any since I joined. I don't know if there's like a different color or the way the um, logo is. Got America's Navy on the back, you know. And then this backpack. I'm pretty sure the backpack changed because the last time I watched like MEPS videos, I think the backpack was like more like a blue and it didn't have like all of this on it because they did change the camouflage colors um to green now for the navy it's like no longer blue like there's no longer the dress blue and stuff like that so there's a bag i got and inside was like a lanyard it was a pen um i think it's like more information about the navy so inside the bag you also got your start guide which is the standard transition acknowledgement requirement training guide um i have my posters here because you know i was using it to like study different stuff so what i had to study i had to study like the military alphabet i know those now like from a to z i know it's let me see let's, let me test my knowledge so it's alpha bravo charlie a b c d delta echo 
Foxtrot. Okay, I'm gonna say these alpha this alphabet out of order. So it's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Goat, Lima. Um, we got Romeo, we got November, Oscar, Mike, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Yankee, Zulu. I feel like I'm forgetting a letter, but y'all get the point. I know, I know my alphabet. I, I can say that I know well. But yeah, you gotta know the alphabet. You gotta know your chain of commands. Um, you gotta know a lot, pretty much. Etiquette and stuff like that. How to walk and your ranks and recognition. That's very important that you know that. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, I'll probably do a video about like more on the start guide just let me know that you guys want to see and i'll do like a more in-depth like what's inside of this book like what do you need to know well you don't need to really know but you should know um and yeah um is that it i think that was pretty much it oh this is a long video lord it's almost an hour ah! but yeah that is pretty much it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I made sense throughout this entire thing because, you know, sometimes I just be rambling and you're like, girl, you ain't even making no sense. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I made sense. Let me know down in the comments below um, if you want me to make a video about, like, the start guide or about the DEP, which stands for Delayed Entry Program, which is basically what you're really signing the contract for to be enlisted in the Delayed Entry Program. So if you want to know more about that, leave it down in the comments below and I'll be sure to make a video about that. Um, if you have any questions about me, um, about being HM, um, am I in the military now, like what's going on with that, updates and stuff like that, let me know down in the comments below. I'll answer your questions or I'll just make a question and answer video with it. And that's pretty much it, y'all. Thank you for watching and bye.